What's up, everybody? I'm former quarterback Malik Rozier, and if football, sports, interviews, and having a good time interests you, then make sure to click the like and subscribe button as it really does help support this channel, and it also makes sure that you guys never miss a new video. How's everyone doing? And welcome back to another episode of the Malik Rogers. Show. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. I know I am. And today, what I really want to talk about is specifically Miami football. Um, I'll probably do this once, at least twice a week. Um, we'll probably have about three to four episodes a week as well as I'm changing a lot of my schedule. So I hope you guys um, are ready for this journey with me. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is my ideal offense. Okay, so we're going to go over my top personnel groupings, my top protections, runs, and my top passes. And we'll see if you guys agree. I won't give you all of them, but I'll give you kind of like, hey, if you know, if I had to implement day one, what would I be implementing? Okay, so number one personnel. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it says 11, 12, 20, and 21. Okay. So 11 is one running back, one tight end, three receivers. 12 is one running back, two tight end, two receivers. 20, two running backs, no tight ends, three receivers. 21, two running backs, one tight end, two receivers. Um, so a lot of these personnel groupings is what I would run based on our receiver groups. And honestly, based on some of the guys that I like, like I like our tight ends group. I like Elijah Arroyo. Um, I like Jaleel Skinner. And honestly, with the 21, for me, I know a lot of people are big on Mark Fletcher. The guy that I'd be really big on, to be honest with you, is Chris Johnson. I think that guy's fast. I think, you know, if, if we can get him free release in the flats, he'll be able to stretch a lot of these linebackers and safety sideline to sideline. I definitely see, you know, guys like Mark Fletcher, you know, getting into the game and, and, and definitely helping us later on in the season. Um, but I think there's some really cool things we could do out of 20 and 21 personnel with some of the younger backs that we have. So next, we're going to go into protections, and I'll kind of break this down as much as I can. So the first one is just a pure six-man slot. So um, we used to call it Lucy, so the line would slide left. The running back would go right, right off the edge. This is more for your quick game. You know, if you're trying to get the ball in and out of your quarterback's hands, not really good, um, you know, to sort out different blitzes and things like that. But, you know, if you're running like slant hitches, um, you know, maybe it's even like, you know, inside fade, outside hitches. Um, things like that, you know, you can go full slide and get the ball out pretty quick. Um, the next one I would do is is free release. So what this means is I would free release the back, um, kind of what we talked about earlier, where the back has no, you know, basically pass game responsibilities. They only have the route, whether it's a Texas route, whether it's a flat. Um, a lot of this does now put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and center. But I mean, we have a vet quarterback. We have a vet center. I don't see why, you know, we wouldn't be able to implement this. You know, if I had a younger quarterback, this is something I definitely wouldn't want to do because it does put a lot of pressure. But I think, you know, between TBD and Matt Lee, they definitely understand what's going on. And, and I think they'll study enough film to get, you know, 95 to 80 percent or really 95 to 98 percent of the blitzes. Um, a lot of times, you know, they do catch you. That's why you have built in hots. That's why you have, you know, escape routes to kind of get you out of a bad situation. So for me personally, you know, I would do a lot of free release with the backs. Um, obviously, I think guys like Henry Parrish can definitely block. Um, but I also think that if you're able to free release him, it just puts another guy out in the flat. So, you know, um, right over the middle of the linebackers are to kind of contain them. And then lastly is a three man slide with man on backsides. What that means is let's say we go slide left. So my center left guard, left tackle would all do a basic slide to the left. My backside is man on. So my backside guard will block, you know, the closest defense alignment to him. My my backside tackle would block, obviously, the defensive end, okay? Um, this is where the back would be in protection. We call it the triangle. So he would have basically outside linebacker, safety, to the corner. That's kind of his triangle that he's reading. If you think about it in like a cover two look, you have the outside linebacker right outside the end. You have the safety on the hash and the corner on the outside, okay? So that's kind of his triangle um, that he's reading. is very simple, but those would be the main three protections that I run. Keep it simple. Let these guys play fast, okay? So for my three runs, it's going to be inside zone, power, and trap, okay? So to me, power and trap are just a little different. Um, to me, power is where you're, you're, you're technically trying to, you know, kick out the defensive end more on a trap play. You're hoping that he comes down and you're able to kind of get the end um, and, and, and get out. I know some people call it pin pull. Um, I call it trapping because instead of us trying to kick out that defensive end, we're more trying to wash him down and trap him inside. To, to me, these runs are tone setters. Inside zone is about getting your hat across. It's stripe on stripe moving. Obviously, power, it's, you know, a pulling guard. 
um, you know, kicking out a defensive end and on trap to me, you know, you're going to have your tight end or tackle wash down that end, trapping him inside and you're going to pull that guard or maybe even your tackle. Sometimes we've even done it with the center. You're going to pull him around and now, he, you know, he's, he's finding linebackers, he's finding safeties, he's finding work downfield. Um, to me, these runs very much fit the kind of mindset that we want to have. Um, you know, I I would lean more towards inside run. Um, to be honest with you, I'm just very, very big on inside run. I don't like outside run unless um, I have really, really fast tackles. Um, and I think that, you know, with the with the kind of personnel we have, especially with the offensive line, inside run is going to be one of our best runs this year. So that's what I would lean on. And then lastly, we're going to go with the passes. So I'm going to give you guys three really concepts. So one is vertical. And what I mean is go. So I know a lot of people think vertical is like post, different and corners, different things like that. Um, to me, would be four verts. Um, the only other um, variation of verts that I would run is, you know, obviously the inside lane verts with outside run like speed outs or hitches and things like that. The next one would be cross. So um, there's a couple ways to run it. The biggest thing is, is whether it's two by two or, or three by one, um, whichever side is opposite of the crossing route that's coming at it has to run either a goal and an out, has to run a post, has to run some type of D concept to, you know, get the safeties and get the corners out of there. Um, then obviously you're going to have a crossing route by the slot guy. Um, we've done it every once in a while by the outside guy. We've had to motion him in. Um, but usually it's a cross type of dig or curl or something on the backside. Super easy concept. Uh, we ran a lot when I was in college. There's a lot, a lot of high school teams run it. Um, and lastly is mesh. To me, there's a ton of ways to get creative with mesh. To me, um, mesh causes a lot of, I don't want to necessarily take attention to detail for the defense, um, but it causes a lot of communication. It causes a lot of confusion um, just because guys are passing things off. If it's in man coverage, now you have a slow key, a little bit of a rub. Um, so I'm, I'm a really big fan of mesh whenever, um, you know, I was with Georgia um, for the year that the, the quarterback that they really watched was Lamar Jackson. And if you go back and watch Lamar's first year in the NFL, the play they ran the most was mesh. It was very simple for him. You know, it was one, two, three, four, caused a lot of confusion, helped, you know, honestly helped the offense understand spacing, understand zones, because, you know, they have to understand, hey, is it man? I keep running. If it's zone, where is the zone? Where is the weak spot? Because cover three weak spot and cover two weak spot are going to be definitely different. We will take a quick break and thank our sponsors, d Sports. DGEN Sports is an exciting NFT project that combines real-world sports and NFT culture. Behind an experienced leadership team, the project just launched their third season and offers free-to-play sports prediction prizes every month. They gave away a $250 NFT for the Masters alone. Follow them for... We would take a quick break to thank our sponsors, DGEN Sports. DGEN Sports is an exciting NFT project that combines real world sports and NFT culture. Behind an experienced leadership team, the project just launched their third season and offers free to play sports prediction prizes every month. They gave away a $250 NFT for the Masters alone. Follow them on Twitter at DGEN Sports IO. So, next, we're going to go into my defensive style and I'm going to go over my top three coverages. OK, so these are the top three coverages that I think would definitely fit um, the Miami style. So number one is one rat and, and really one man. And, and, and I'll kind of explain it. Um, so one rat is obviously your one high look. It's man across the board. The difference is the the leverage of the defense should be outside. OK, so usually in cover one man, there's going to be a guy blitzing, whether it's a Mike, whether it's a Sam, Will, doesn't really matter. They can blitz kind of who they want, but it's four down linemen plus one guy blitzing everyone's man. And cover one man leverage is inside because you're losing that that basic defender that's blitzing. <clears throat> And one rat, you're going to go outside because now that, that that guy that's usually blitzes is now spying the quarterback. He is more in the middle. So, you know, if it's quick game and I'm thinking, you know, I got slants on both sides. If they're one and run rat, as I go left, right, when my eyes go this way, that's where he's going to flow to. OK, so he's basically reading me. Um, the reason why the defense wants outside leverage is because we want to funnel these inside routes into that rat where it can be easily be a pick or he's going to knock his head off. Vice versa, when it's cover one man and the guy blitzes now, now i got to use the sideline as my help because if these guys cross my face and run a slant, I have no inside help. So those are the top two coverages, at least defensively, that I would run. Um, a lot of it is mano a mano. It's, 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 you know, putting your head down, doing your job, and having really good technique. So next would be quarters slash stubby. Okay, so quarters is a two by two or really a two high look. 
Um, a lot of people think about cover two. They get off the hash or quarters, even like quarter, quarter, quarter. Basically, you split the field in four. Um, that's not really how I would run it. You know, I would run more of like a quarters man to where once guys get past 10 yards, my safety and corners, they lock on man. You got guys underneath. Um, there is some faults in this. You know, obviously, you got to have good safeties that are good with play action, understanding when they're play action, when they're running it. Um, the other version is stubby. Um, the, the way that I like to run stubby is on a three by one. It's still your quarters look. But the difference is, is now I'm going to shift my nickel Sam outside of number two and my safety slightly inside. Um, and so what that's going to do is that's going to allow basically that nickel Sam and that safety to inside out that slot guy. A lot of people in three by one like to go flood concepts, like to go, you know, double post with something underneath. Um, so that's where you really put that slot guy in a bind and you kind of take him out of the equation based on pre-alignment. And last would be two man. Um, this would obviously come in third and long. Um, you know, I would even maybe do some two Tampa um, but, you know, two man to me would probably be the best coverage, you know, third and 10, third and 15, third and 20, um, you know, really, really putting a lot of pressure on these guys. I might even do, um, you know, even a cover one look, kind of put some pressure on the offensive line to protect, especially if it's a deeper throw. Um, so that's some stuff that I would do, especially if I was defensive coordinator. Obviously, um, I have knowledge of the defense, but I've never actually been there with like hearing people call games. Um, but for me, when I think about coverages that I either like or I dislike playing against, these were the top three. I was like, these are the three that I would definitely make sure that my defense ran. So next, we're going to go over, you know, my top three players that I want to see personally, you know, go into the season and, and really grow um, as I think they'll have really big roles either this year or the next couple of years. So one is Ray Ray. I've um, been hearing a lot of hype from him. Guy's fast. He has hands. Um, he's a South Florida kid. Definitely have a lot of excitement to see what he can do. Um, next is, you know, Jakari Brown, the quarterback guy is probably the most athletic guy on the team. If not, he's definitely a top two or three. Um, you know, he obviously has I mean, everyone on here has their issues, but, you know, his ability to make plays, his ability to extend plays, his likable personality, just his freakish size is something that I I think he has to play some type of role. I don't know what role they would give him, um, but I definitely think he needs to be on the field, you know, graining experience, especially if he's going to be our starter for next year. Any chance that we can legally give him, I'm going to say not illegally, but I, I would love for him to redshirt him if possible. But, you know, we can give him four good games like I'm thinking, you know, we do the Miami, Ohio you obviously do Bethune Cookman if we can get him some for Texas AM because I think that's gonna be really, really good competition. You know, maybe save him for one more game a little later. Um, but I think it could be interesting, you know, to see Jakari Brown in some, you know, uh, quote unquote wildcat packages or, you know, his type of package. Um, I think that could definitely work for him. And and the last one is a two freshman offensive linemen. You know, I've heard that they're that Samson and also Francis are, are batting like crazy. Um, you know, I'm very excited to see them. I think these guys are going to be someone that are going to be staples for offensive line and hopefully help us in the next couple of years keep recruiting really, really high elite offensive linemen that can come in and compete um, basically instantly. And on the defensive side, Bain, I, I think this guy has to be big for us on the defense. I think that LT will be a huge implementation, but there will be times where he has to come out. I think Bain has to be the guy to step in and, and really, you know, fill the gap, fill the hole. And he's done a great job, you know, the spring to the fall, I expect him continuously to get better throughout the year. The next is Malik Bryant. You know, this guy was obviously a huge kid out of Orlando, big, big, you know, defensive guy that I, I know personally everyone was recruiting. Um, though they, they haven't played him in a linebacker. I think this could be very unique. I think the guy has good instincts. I think that he is hungry. I think that he's a headhunter. Um, so Mike linebacker to me definitely makes sense for him. Um, you know, my biggest thing now is, you know, I don't know how much Mike he played. Um, in high school, but in college, you run the defense. You, I know just as much about the defense as the defensive coordinator does. Um, so to me, I think that's going to be the biggest growth area. I don't think it's going to be physicality. I don't think it's going to be his love for football. I don't think it's going to be, you know, him getting out the way or not making a tackle. I, gotta, I think it's really just going to be him understanding the defense, because if you're the Mike, you got to be the glue that holds everything together. So um, I think he's going to be someone that steps from that role very, very well. And I'm, and I'm super excited to see um, how he takes on the role of being the Mike linebacker in the future. And then lastly is Jaden Wayne. This guy is a freak defensive end, 6'5", 240 plus, um, really fast, really long. Kind of reminds me of a Greg Russo. I don't want to give him that much hype because Greg was a Greg was a freak, but I've heard a lot of good things about this guy. And I think that, you know, if he can come on, put on a little more weight, I don't know really where he's sitting at. But, you know, to be honest with you, if he's a freshman, he's going to, have to put on some more weight because these offensive linemen are going to be big. Um, you know, he's going to, have to protect himself. Um, and so I really hope that these three young guys can really come along on the defensive side to really help us. And then the last thing that we're going to go over is my top three players on each side of the ball throughout the year. So number one has to be TVD. I think this guy's going to have a great year. I think he's going to be comfortable. I think he trusts his offensive coordinator. I think he trusts his receivers. I think the skill guys around him are playing very, very well. Number two is Xavier. This guy has to be basically his version of Braxton Bear. So what he was for me, your third down blanket, the guy that you can go to whenever, you know, 
shit gets rough. Shit gets real. You know, you're in that rivalry game. You're in that Clemson, Louisville, Florida State, Texas A&M game. It's it's third and five, and you know maybe it's right before the half or something like that. You got to have that guy that you know if it's cover one man, who can I go to? Who can I trust? I think Xavier will be that guy for him. And then last on the offensive side has to be Matt Lee. He's controlling the offensive line. I think he's going to be super implementational. Um, on the offensive run side, you know, a lot of that stuff has to do with him saying, hey, we're going to A or we're going to B or we're going to C up or we're going to double or we're going to triple, you know, really communicating with the guys, making sure the whole offensive line is on the same page and that they're flowing as a pack. Um, I think we'll do a great job at that. On the defensive side, obviously, we know Cam Kitchens, um, you know, consensus All-American guy got his flag. Congrats to that man. So on the defensive side, we obviously have Cam Kitchens. This guy is going to be the leader of not only the defense, probably the entire team. Um, he's someone that works hard. People respect him. He does the right thing at all points. So I expect him to have another flawless year. I expect him to just be basically the heart and soul of this, uh, specifically Miami defense, but ho hopefully the entire team as well. Um, the next one is James. I think just because Cam is on one side, what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of people target James. You know, I know that he's playing some linebacker, which I think definitely can fit into his favor. Um, you know, he almost reminds me of like a Trayman Edmonds, definitely more athletic um, than him. But, you know, if he's a guy that can play that outside linebacker at 6'4", 6'5", real long and lanky, super athletic, um, it just really, really affects the tight end game and what tight ends can and cannot do. Um, and I think that he's in a spot to where, you know, if he can really lock down that that safety slash outside linebacker role and make sure that these tight ends aren't able to get loose and things like that, um, he'll have a great unit to really, really help us in the secondary. And then lastly is LT. You know, to me, he's one of our best, if not the best defense linemen that we have. Um, he's someone that, you know, I, I think ability-wise definitely has it. Um, my biggest thing with him is keep the high motor. I know there's times where you're tired. I know there's times where, you know, you might be a little banged up at the end of the day, man. Like, you have all the talent. You have everything you need to basically be a first-round draft pick. Um, and I think you have the ability, and I, and I definitely think that you're hungry enough to do it. Um, so these are my three guys that I think will, you know, absolutely have a phenomenal year this year for the Miami Hurricanes. Um, and I'm very interested. Who do you guys think are your top three guys on offense and on defense? So with that being said, that is it for this Miami segment. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. We're going to go over some different universities. You know, I'm probably going to trickle in, you know, some Florida State, some Clemson in the next couple of weeks. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.